بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم مبال عیو الحبت فی اللہ The intention of the mu'min, the believer is and forms the foundation of their ibadat, of their ibadah. That a person must have proper intention when worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And along with sincere intention or sincerity, ikhlas, a person should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or must worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based upon the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah is so severe and stern in opposing religious innovation and heresy. Because religion innovation or religious innovation and heresy both contradict and deviate from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And they both imply that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not perfect ibadah and worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said that he was a he was to be followed. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said follow Allah and follow in his and follow his messenger. Obey Allah and obey his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so along with this important qaida or these two principles we have to explore the intention and one of the most important ahadith regarding intention is the hadith on Amir al-Mu'mineen Abi Hafs Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inma al-a'malu bin niyat wa inma likulli imri'in manawa faman kanat hijratuhu ila Allah wa rasulihi fa hijratuhu ila Allah wa rasulihi وَمَنْ كَانَتْ حِجْتُوا لِلْدُّنْيَا يُسِيبَهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَحِجْتُوا إِلَى مَا هَجِرَا إِلَيْهِ مُتَفِقٌ عَلَيْهِ In the hadith that was narrated upon Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the faithful, Abi Hafs, Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying Verily actions are tied to the intention and everyone shall get that for which he intended So he who migrates to Allah and his Messenger then his migration is to Allah and his messenger and he who migrates for some worldly benefit or to take some woman in marriage then his migration is for that for which he migrated for and this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim there are immense fawaid and benefits from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and this hadith as we mentioned it forms the foundation the foundation in fact of Islam of sincerity in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person must have ikhlas when worshipping the Lord of the worlds and their worship 
should only be directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Verily actions are tied to the intentions that affirmed and emphasized this principle and it emphasized the fact that our deeds are and will be rewarded based upon our intention and so it refers to all of actions all acts of worship regardless of whether a person it was a statement by a person that deals worship supplication for example or it was some sort so, some action or it was leaving off something with the intention to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example reading the Quran reading the Quran is an action and it's an action partly of the tongue as well when you're reciting the Quran the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wudu when you make purification for prayer and preparation for prayer this is a physical uh, preparation predominantly although it requires the intention and leaving off sinfulness for example a person who leaves uh, off stealing something when maybe perhaps they had intended to steal before but then they left it off for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so that has to be emphasized that this is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what makes it ikhlas is that they left off doing this sinful action for the sake of Allah not because they did not have the ability to fulfill this sinfulness for example the person who wants to pickpocket but they cannot find individuals around them in their proximity in order to perpetrate that crime or the person who wants to unlawfully uh, to kill people or terrorize people but they cannot find the means to begin to act upon that their, their evil desires and wishes so then they leave it those people will not be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those situations because they did not leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they left it due to the inability to fulfill the sin and sinfulness and in addition in this hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it emphasizes for us the importance of the intention and also we learn from this hadith as many of the ulama like Imam Nawawi and before him many who emphasize that the mahala niya al qalb that the place of the of one's intention is the heart so we make our intention in our heart is not necessary for the for a person who wants to pray salat al asr to when the imam makes the takbir and says Allahu Akbar that the person says makes an outward intention and says I'm going to pray four raka units of prayer the asr prayer and with the imam and this is my intention no that is a religious innovation that is bid'ah because that was not known to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't do this and his sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'in didn't do this and the tabi'een with ba'a tabi'een did not do this rahimahumullah jami'an so in that situation a person would have violated the fact that the place of the intention is the heart it's not necessary to mention your intention on your tongue some of the immense benefits and ulama have written books and volumes about the benefits of this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some of the benefits though 
that we can look at, especially with regards to the intention, is the intention, for one, it distinguishes ibadat, or worship, from the various kinds of worship. And what is meant here, for example, if you have the Dhuhr uh, prayer and Salat al-Asr. Both of those are four raka units of prayer. What distinguishes them is the time that of the prayer and your intention. But predominantly we can say the intention. That if a person prayed at a, and you, you didn't, you were unaware of which time uh, they were praying, you would only know or it can only be distinguished by their intention because the outward uh, and physical aspects of the prayer are the same they're both four rakat units so your intention is distinguishes the various times of ibadah one from another they distinguish between the various types of ibadah Another important aspect of the intention of Habatifillah is that the intention also distinguishes with the maqsood bil amal, with what a person intends by their deeds. So, for example, again, if someone were praying and they were praying in the time of the Dhuhr prayer, but, in fact, their intention was not to pray, but it was actually to do some exercise similar to the way people do yoga. Then they would not be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if all of their actions were the exact same actions as the prayer, because their intention wasn't in place. And so that shows us the importance of the intention again, is that your intention distinguishes your worship from other actions not just from other actions of worship but it distinguishes between worldly th activities and your worship so if you do those actions of prayer in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's your, uh, your intention and it's in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then you will be rewarded and it will be considered fulfilling your obligation of prayer but if a person does the same actions, everything, in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa even, they met that condition, but they failed to have the correct intention. Their intention was to please the people. Their intention was actually just to stretch their limbs, or whatever the situation may be, or to deceive the Muslims. They will not be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that action. So this shows us the importance of the intention. Another very important aspect related to this hadith is regarding the is issue of hijrah and that hijrah it means to leave something so in the sharia as a sharia term hijrah is predominantly referred to or refers to leaving Darul Kufr ila Darul Islam Khauf al Fitna ala Deen that Hijra is as a Sharia concept is leaving the land of disbelief to the land of belief or Islam out of a fear of fitna regarding your religion meaning it could be harm you're fearful of the harm you're fearful of the lack of representation you're fearful of oppression you're fearful of being killed whatever the situation may be but it's a fitna or fitna of just being able to practice maybe you're unable to practice the five times daily prayer in the place that you live and reside in because it's a place of disbelief and the people don't honor and respect you and respect your religion in that place or for example what we see in France where they uh, oppress the Muslim woman and the believers in general with with legislation that prohibits Islamic dress for the woman to wear hijab for the woman to wear niqab to cover her face 
They say it goes against the French national identity, identity, and and, and other uh, arguments that they use. So in those situations, a person's Islam is violated. Their right to practice their religion is violated. So for them, perhaps the Hijra would be better for them. And Hijra Ahabatifillah, as the ulama mentioned, that Hijra is Thalatha Aksam. That it is three types of Hijra. The first time is the first type is Hijra al Makan. Is uh, leaving is is to leave a uh, the place. For example, the person, the Muslim, who leaves uh, a non-Muslim country or a sinful, wicked country where sin is prevalent and un-Islamic ideas and and activities are prevalent, to go to a land where Islam is dominant and practiced. So that is the the first type of hijrah. And the scholars mention that this type of hijra, ahabatifillah, is that it is an obligation if you're unable to 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 practice your religion properly to to make that hijra. But if you're able to practice the tenets of Islam, you're able to pray your five times daily prayer and to uh, look like a Muslim, you know, have uh, Islamic dress and and so forth. Then in those situation, that situation, it would be mustahab, and this is also affirmed by the committee of the major major scholars in Saudi Arabia. And this hijra, ahabatifillah, is in order to defend one's religion in two different ways: to defend your faith from shubahat and to defend your faith from shahawat. Defending your faith in sh from shubahat meaning to defend your faith from doubtful issues and issues that have to do with attacking your creed. For example, we see many of our du'at that, for example, in America and other places in the West who go back to call people to Islam, which is a great form of jihad and they will be rewarded immensely if they do it in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala madhab kitab illa wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah but we find that some of our brothers and sisters they go back and they're attacked by shubahat maybe they don't have the proper tools to be able to defend their religion, I mean, as far as knowledge, they don't have the sufficient knowledge. So secularism uh, invades, becomes uh, an ideology that they adopt, or ideologies that contradict the Sharia. They become extreme and vi extremely violent, which also contradicts the Sharia, or they become extremely pacifistic in which they leave off many of the Islamic injunctions. However, the point being that they are affected by shubahat, doubtful things. So, this is one of the things, in, in, in one of the ways in which a person can be attacked in their faith. Maybe they leave Islam even, as has been the case as well, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. The other way in which a person is attacked is through shahwat is through their desires so perhaps the sinfulness that they witness and the openness affects them in their religion so in this situation it perhaps may be better for them to leave that land as well because maybe they're not a person who can deal with seeing women in mini skirts and having to mix with the uh, between the opposite sexes and and so forth so they are harmed by that environment they are unable to restrain themselves from those things which are prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the second type of hijrah habitifillah is 
the hijra uh, from uh, the hijra of amal and the hijra to amal ayyul ahabati fillah this is when a person leaves off sinfulness those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and in this regard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said wal muhajir man hajira man naha Allahu anhu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the muhajir the person who makes hijra the person who who uh, fits this this act of ibadah to be called a muhajir is the person who leaves off what Allah has prohibited so this is hijra this is hijra hijra ta amal of leaving off uh, uh, sinfulness sinful deeds and the third type of hijra habitifillah is hijra tul amal the hijra tul amal habitifillah ay hajr al insan li ahl al maasi وهذه قد تجب أن ترتب عليها مصلحة كالحجة أهل الحصوق والعسيان الذين يجاهرون بالمعصية وأما إذا لم يترتب مصلحة فلا حجة العامل أهبت في الله this is leaving off those people who are sinful so this is the hijra of leaving off sinful people so perhaps you live in a Muslim land or a non-Muslim land but there is a lot of sinful people around you by avoiding those people do then you are preserving your religion and by mixing with them perhaps you are harming your religion unless you're the one who has a positive effect upon them instead of being affected by their sinfulness so this has to do with the maslaha uh, the maslaha and the mafsada looking at the harms and the benefits of that particular situation and al-muhajir aqsam that the person who makes hijra it's of different types as we mentioned, there's the one who leaves off, uh, leaves the uh, disbelieving land to a Muslim land, or leaves off a land of sinfulness to a land of obedience, or leaves uh, a place where bid'ah is prevalent to a land of sunnah. And then there's the muhajir, the one who goes for the sake of wealth. As the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in the Hadith, so this person, they leave a place, maybe they even leave a Muslim land to go to a non-Muslim land in order to do business. So they have made hijra for a world to gain for, for wealth. And then there's the hijra for the more specified worldly gain of, for example, for marriage. Maybe a person leaves one land for example, we have uh, a lot of people who want to marry from the West. Maybe they live in uh, a Muslim country, a poor country, an impoverished country. So they make hijra from their poor, impoverished Muslim land to a wealthy land which has opportunity for them. And this is also considered a type of hijra, hijra for the worldly gain. And they do this, ahabati fillah, by the path of marriage. And this is why, uh, and this is what the Prophet said, uh, إِنَّمَا أَعْمَالُ بِنِيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ لِمْرِيَ مَنَاوَ فَمَنْ كَانَ تَهْجُتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهْجُتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَ تَهْجُتُهُ لِدُنْيَا So whoever is hijra is for the dunya, for this world. O imra'atin, O to take some woman in marriage, then his hijra, then he will get that for what he intended for. So that's what he'll get. He won't receive the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an act of ibadah for doing what they did. Ahabatifillah, there are immense, immense benefits. That's just a general, some of the basic aspects r with regards to the concept of hijra. Let's quickly talk about some of the fawaid of this hadith. One of this hadith, 
one of the benefits of this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is that this hadith shows us the importance of the intention and that it is one of the conditions to have your deeds accepted so to have a sincere intention in your worship and follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are both acts uh, both a part of having your worship accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith, a habit of Allah, is that uh, to pronounce, to make your niyyah on your tongue, instead of just in your heart, is a bid'ah, as the ulama, many of the ulama state and express in their books. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is this hadith encourages us to be sincere in our acts, acts of worship. And this hadith also uh, encourages us to make hijra, hijra from the land of uh, of disbelief to the land of belief, hijra from the land of shirk to the land of tawhid, hijra to from the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah. So this is an encouragement to be in the place where it's going to be best for you, and you're going to thrive in your religion. You're going to be able to practice your religion in uh, what's what's best for you personally. Another benefit of this hadith is that by having a lack of sincerity that this is a sign for a person's uh, deeds to be rejected. And also that sincerity is a sign to have your deeds uh, accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, this hadith encourages us to not be of those who just desire materialism and consumerism and worldly gain only, but to think about and do our actions for the hereafter, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to come closer to Allah as acts of worship to Allah azza wa jal. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is this hadith shows us that people are on different levels with regards to their intention. And everyone will get that for which they intended. Another benefit of this hadith, a habit of Allah, is the is it illustrates that one of the best uh, acts of worship you can do is make hijrah. To leave off a place where you can't practice Islam to a place you can practice better. That's one of the greatest uh, forms of ibadah that you can do. And this hadith affirms that for us. Another benefit of this hadith, a habit of Allah, is it also shows us the importance of traveling and striving on journeys to go for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether you're going jihad visa bilillah, whether you're traveling, you're making hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you're going to seek knowledge in a far off land to come closer to Allah, whether you're just going to uh, be in the gathering of the believers and, and go into a place of knowledge or what have you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's far away, you'll be rewarded for that because you strove to attain that and you'll gain that for what you intended. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the importance of striving to get closer to the people of knowledge to, to benefit from the scholars and to travel to sit with the scholars and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with, uh, to be from those people who benefit from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us that we should make hijra or we should avoid and leave off uh, places that are sinful, sinful places and places of bid'ah, where people are practicing bid'ah. So if you know that there's a gathering in your neighborhood, for example, of people, and they're your Muslim brothers and sisters, but they, for example, turn off the lights and they supplicate to the dead, or they make vicar, group vicar together, or do all kind of un-Islamic practices, even if they their things, their actions that... Uh, have some asal in the shar, but then they deviate from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Avoid those those uh, places where they are doing these actions, and avoid those people, those people of innovation. Another benefit, a habit of Allah, is this hadith encourages us uh, and, and warns us to uh, 
to avoid places of sinfulness and countries of sinfulness that we should not strive to take be tourists in places where sin and ma'asi uh, take place also this hadith shows us the permissibility of making hajr from the people of ma'asi and the people of bid'ah that it is permissible and looking at the harms and the benefits as we mentioned already it is permissible to 